What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5.6 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply my crouched locomotion system and animations to the first person template in Unreal Engine 5.6. So as you can see here, I've got the first person template from 5.6, and if I hit crouch, my character is crouching, and the camera is crouching with him and I can crouch under crouched obstacles like this one here, and if I step out, he'll uncrouch, so on and so forth. It's everything from my crouched locomotion system, uh, but just adding the functionality to move the camera in first person, in the first person template. So FYI, you will need to follow along with my crouched locomotion tutorial, which is linked in the description and the pinned comment, as well as a card up the top right. And uh, this just shows you how to take that system and also make it work with the first person template. But just before we get started, guys, I'd like to invite you all to join our free and public Discord server, The Pitchfork Academy. It's a space we've created where you guys can get together and discuss our tutorials, look for help, and mix with other like-minded people. I'll leave the invite link in the description and in the pinned comment, but without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, now I'm here in the first person template in Unreal Engine 5.6.1, and as you can see, I'm using the exact same animations from my crouched locomotion tutorial, and if we head into BP first person character, you'll see this is all pretty much exactly the same as my Crouch Locomotion tutorial. And if we select the mesh here, not the first person mesh, the third person mesh, and browse to the unarmed ABP here, the animation blueprint for the third person mesh, and open this up, you'll see that this is where I've set up all of the states and the transitions uh, exactly as in the Crouched Locomotion tutorial. And I've done that on this third person mesh because the first person mesh actually just uses a control rig to copy the pose from the parent component, which is the third person mesh. So whatever animations are applied to the third person mesh are copied onto the first person mesh with a couple of changes to sort of make the head, uh, you know, a bit smaller so you don't see it and stuff like that. But if I hit play here, you'll see that my first person mesh crouches, just uh, as would be showing on my third person mesh. Uh, but the problem here is the camera doesn't lower with it. So that's what I'm going to show you in this quick tutorial, because a couple of people have been asking how to apply that crouched locomotion to this first person template. So that's what we are going to do. So if we head to the first person character here, and I'm going to go to the viewport and take a look at this first person camera. So this is obviously what we need to lower uh, to work with this crouched locomotion. And you'll see here it's parented to the first person mesh. So we just need to change the relative location of this first person camera. And the first thing you'll notice about the location is it's not zero. So that's important as well because we're going to be lerping from this location uh, to a different location. Um, and the other thing you want to take note of here is the axes uh, of this location. So usually you would, you know, drop it down on the Z axis to lower its height. But if we grab the first person camera on this axis right here and move it up and down, you'll see that the axis that's actually changing is this X axis here. And just to confirm as well, because I might want to move this camera forward a little bit as well as down, I'll also grab it on this axis and confirm which axis uh, this forward axis is, and it is the Y axis on the location. Uh, so with that being said, uh, this is really, really straightforward. We'll head to the event graph, and down here where we've got this event end crouch, and then we're doing a couple of checks to see if we're trying to crouch and not trying to jump. And uh, this basically just makes our character re-crouch whenever it crouches. And that's for, you know, for example, when we're walking out from underneath a crouched obstacle. Uh, but this uh, false pin right here, this false execution pin, 
This is whatever will execute when we don't want our character to recrouch. So when we want them to uh, just actually end crouch. So this is our actual event on end crouch right here. And the other node we're going to need is the event on, uh, I think it's begin crouch. I'll just search event on crouch, uh, start, event on start crouch. So we're going to use these two nodes basically to control a timeline that will change the relative uh, offset of our first person camera. So we can right click here and add a timeline and I'm not going to rename it. I'll plug this node into play. And as I said, this false execution pin right here is our event on end crouch. I'll plug this into reverse like so. And I'll double click on this timeline to open it up. I'm gonna make this quite snappy. I'll make it 0 0.15 seconds. Add a float track. I'll hold shift and click twice to get two keyframes. The first one I'll set to zero and zero. This one I'll set to the maximum time of our float track, so 0 0.15 and a value of one. And I'm going to smooth these out by selecting both of these and right clicking, changing this to auto so that it's just got a little bit of ease in and ease out like so. And that's all I need to do in the timeline here. I can close the timeline and then we're going to use this on the first person camera to set the relative location. Plug this into update and we'll get a lerp vector. use the output of this float track as the alpha. And the A here needs to be the default uh, offset of the first person camera. So uh, what we can actually do to, instead of just taking these values here and inputting them here, uh, we can actually just make this a variable by uh, getting our event begin play node And on event begin play, let's get the relative offset, get relative location of our camera. And uh, we'll just promote this to a variable and we'll call this um, default camera relative location. And then that way, uh, if you do end up changing the location of your camera by default, it won't matter because it will just store this on begin play as whatever you've set it as. And we can do the same thing with our sort of desired offset for our crouched location. So we can just duplicate this one and I'll just call this one crouched camera relative location. And uh, as I said, the uh, vertical offset is this first number here. And I found that negative uh, 40 works well for me, but this is just how many units down you want your camera to go uh, when you're crouched. And I'm also going to move it forward by about 15 units like so. And then with our lerp vector node right here, we're going to lerp from our default camera location to our crouched camera location. And now guys, there is one other small problem. Uh, and that is to do with the control rig that sort of deforms the first person mesh. And this was brought to my attention in the comments section. Hence, uh, I've had to re upload this video. And I just uh, found out a quick fix for this sort of problem. So just quickly, I'll show you what it is. And uh, basically what it is, if we press F8 to eject here and have a look at our character, you'll see that we've got these two meshes here. One is a third person mesh uh, that sort of other players would see. And one is the first person mesh that we would see. And they've got this control rig that kind of moves the spine back to sort of get the chest out of the way. And uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired. It hasn't exactly been set up with scalability in mind because if we uh, go back into the character and we crouch, and I've just turned toggle crouch to true here so I can toggle it and then eject, we'll see that the first person mesh, uh, although it copies the pose from the third person mesh, uh, it doesn't really like move down uh, with the character in this uh, example of when we're crouching, it hasn't moved down. Uh, it's still just sort of up in this raised position. It has to do with the control rig and how it works. Uh, but if I go in here, you'll see our crouch is working and our camera is moving down, uh, but the hands don't really move down. Uh, they're still way too high and not in the correct position. So we can't really see our hands because they're all the way up here. Uh, so what we can actually do is if we go to our first person character and we select the first person mesh, you'll see the Anim class over here, the animation blueprint is this ABP FP copy. If we hit browse here and browse to that and open this up, you'll see that it copies the pose from the parent uh, mesh here, and then it applies some uh, solving via this control rig here. We can double click on this control rig to open it up. And this is basically what deforms that first person mesh. Um, now, as I touched on, this is not really set up with scalability in mind because it doesn't allow us to just change the pose of the third person mesh to something like a crouch uh, in this example and have uh, this first person mesh sort of follow suit with the arms and the head here. Um, now, I haven't found a perfect fix for this but we can improve it a little bit. And basically uh, what I found, if we scroll down on the rig hierarchy here, you'll see these are the controls that this rig is using. Um, and this control head being the parent of these other ones here, if we just move this control head uh, to sort of the same height of the actual head, uh, then you know, that can sort of help us to bring the head and the arms down. So if we select this control head and we change it to location and we move that, you'll see that it moves the head and the arms and I'll just control Z that. And that's because that is the parent of these ones here. So this is a very, very quick and hacky way of sort of improving this so it works somewhat with Crouch. There is still some problems here and I do hope that Epic sort of makes this a little bit more fleshed out. You can see that they haven't even finished writing the comment here. It's very rushed and put together in a very, you know, quick and unfinished sort of way. So hopefully they intend on improving this in 5.7. Uh, but here's the fix that I've found. So what I'm actually going to do is take these three nodes from the end here and whoops, and I'm just going to duplicate them over here at the start. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the uh, transform of this control head to take the Z value of the actual head. So here on this set transform, we're actually going to change this type here to control, and we will change this to the control head, which is the parent right here. And then uh, we want to change this get transform control to the control head. And we're going to take everything from the transform of the control head except for the Z axis on the translation. So we can plug the rotation in here and the translation will just take the Z, we'll drop down the translation here. Uh, sorry, the X and the Y. So we'll plug in the X and the Y and we will plug in the scale. And then here we're going to select bone and head and we'll drop down translation and we'll just take translation on the Z axis and plug that in there. And then we just need to plug in the execution pins like so. And uh, you'll see not much seems to have changed here, but if we hit play now and we crouch and we press F8 to eject, you'll see that the head is kind of pushed down to the same level as the head there. And the arms are pretty close. Um, I think they're pretty much as close as they are uh, if you didn't change that control rig when you're standing up. Uh, they do sit at sort of out in front more and I think that has to do with the 
uh, body offset here because this body offset does this sort of um, does this fabric node here uses the body offset to sort of offset spine one to spine four on this kind of angle here and you'll see if I angle that back the arms angle forward uh, and I think that's what's going on that's th putting the, the sort of arms in a bad position there but uh, I haven't worked out a fix for that just yet uh, but this uh, gets it pretty close the only thing is here now the uh, the crouched offset of our camera is now a little bit of overkill uh, because now the camera is actually moving down a little bit so we'll just change that crouched offset here and I'm just going to make it something only very slight I'm going to bring it down by five and forward by five and let's just have a look at how that looks so now when we crouch we can see our hands there and they're kind of more in a more natural position here so like I said it's not a perfect fix but it does work pretty well and we can fit under here we've also got a nice bit of head bobbing when we crouch walk which I actually think is quite nice um, but you'll see a problem here the chest is kind of um, pushing forward when we run uh, you might want to just change that sort of initial position of the camera uh, so we could actually just change this a little bit bring this camera maybe forward just ever so slightly I want to turn grid snapping off there and just bring it ever so slightly forward and see how that looks Yeah, so like I said, there's a problem with the chest there, and that's it has to do with that control rig, and uh, that's kind of on Epic. Uh, to, you know, I, I don't really think it makes sense to have such overcomplication in a template that is supposed to be for beginners and getting used to the engine and having a sort of good starting point, because if you're going to make pretty much any first-person game, will probably have a crouch, and if something as simple as crouch can break that setup, uh, you know, it's not ideal, but uh, this is what I've come up with to sort of uh, make it work with the crouch somewhat. And that's it, guys. Uh, once again, sorry about having to re-upload and add this section at the end. Thank you very much uh, for the gentleman that pointed out this issue with the control rig, and uh, I hope this this little fix here helps out somewhat. As per usual, guys, if this video has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, Please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.